Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, if you've got a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with and you want help with that, if you have questions about our true skin health products or comments or success stories, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We do have lines open for you. Now's the time to get on board, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories as well as news, uh, blog posts as well as news stories and videos on all the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the bright side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can find your, you can start yourself a longevity business. You can enjoy all the thank you checks associated with having your own business with helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you want to make some money by doing good in the world, by helping change the world in a powerful, beneficial way, longevity is a business for you. You want to look into this. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business. You can write off your home office. You can write off your stamps and your office supplies. You can write off your mileage. Enjoy Enjoy all the, uh, the perks of having your own business, making your own hours, working out of your home, working as much or as little as you'd like. 844-866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Bend phone team, or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. And then also I'd like to remind you to please check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com if you're looking for super, super mega potent skin health products, if you're dealing with accelerated aging or acne blemishes or age spots, or if you don't want to be dealing with any of these things, you need to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We're talking about this very interesting and fascinating and underappreciated relationship between the thyroid gland and the adrenal glands, adrenal glands being our stress management glands and our thyroid being our uh, energy distribution glands for normal functioning under conditions of duress, under conditions of stress, under conditions of long-term chronic activation of the stress response, such as uh, the type that follows our many of the things we do in the 21st century here on planet Earth and in the United States of America in particular, things like credit card bills and the news and fear of not being able to pay your rent and you're keeping your job and your bad relationships and all the things that conspire to make life miserable, activate 
the stress response and eventually will shut down or at least slow down the thyroid. So a poorly functioning thyroid or hypothyroidism can be the result of long-term adrenal activation. This is called secondary hypothyroidism and it's a very underappreciated aspect of a poorly functioning thyroid. Now, you have two kinds of hypothyroidism. You have primary hypothyroidism and most hypothyroidism will have some kind of primary uh, aspect to it. Uh, primary hypothyroidism is usually caused by autoimmune attack on the thyroid. The second type of thyroidism, secondary hypothyroidism, is an adrenal issue. Now, it's kind of an artificial distinction to try to separate or tease out these two different types of poorly functioning thyroids, primary and secondary, because really autoimmune disease involves the adrenal glands. So it's really all kinds of kind of the same thing, but nonetheless, you can distinguish primary hypothyroidism as an autoimmune attack and focus on digestive health and support your Hashimoto's thyroiditis is basically what autoimmune thyroid is. Uh autoimmune hypothyroidism is. Always work on the digestive system when you're dealing with an autoimmune disease. I know I say it all the time. I'll keep saying it. It's the most important thing to recognize if you're one of the 80 million or more Americans who's dealing with an autoimmune disease. Always, 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 always go back to the digestive system. This is true about everything, really, but nothing exemplifies the di uh, the rule uh, digestive relationship to poor health more than the relationship that a, a, a poorly functioning digestive system, i.e. leaky gut syndrome, among other digestive health issues, has with autoimmunity. This is called, uh, this is based on a concept that's called molecular mimicry. And molecular mimicry is at the root of autoimmune disease. What does this mean, molecular mimicry? Molecular mimicry is the idea that food molecules mimic glands in the body. When you think about it, our thyroid, from a molecular standpoint, looks like a piece of hamburger. So does our, uh, so does our kidney. So does our uh, adrenal glands. So pretty much every gland in the body looks like food from a molecular standpoint. It is food from a molecular standpoint. There's no difference really from a piece of meat that you get from a cow and a piece of meat from our bodies, or organ or a gland or a structure. And so when we eat a piece of food, it doesn't get processed correctly, it enters into the bloodstream and initiates a defensive response. This is so important, you guys. When food that's not digested leaks into the blood through a broken down digestive tract, it initiates an immune response against that food. Now, what is that food really from a molecular standpoint? It's just pieces of molecules. Well, it turns out that that immune response that's mounted against the particles of food that have gotten into the blood cross-react with glands because the glands look like the food. The immune system is intelligent and it will develop weaponry specific for hamburger, specific for soy, specific for legumes, specific for lectins, specific for gluten, specific for particularly particular chunks of food that don't get digested. And then the immune system will cross-react. It will target organs of the body as much as it will target, the, target these pieces of food that are leaking into the blood. That's autoimmunity in a nutshell. And any boneheaded medical professional that tells you he doesn't understand or we don't understand or nobody knows what causes autoimmune diseases needs to go back to biochemistry 101. It's as simple and you don't need a medical degree to understand it. We eat a food, it doesn't get digested properly, so chunks of the food can leak into the blood, particularly if the intestinal lining is broken down, which it is for most of us. Now you got chunks of food, peptides essentially, little pieces of protein that enter into the bloodstream. They initiate an immune response. That immune response cross-reacts with parts of our body. Bingo, autoimmune disease. And that's why all autoimmune disease needs to be regarded as a digestive health issue. And that's why when you fast, your autoimmune symptoms subside always, not sometimes, always to the degree that you're fasting, the degree that you're eliminating foods. Now, I know you obviously have to eat. You can't fast forever. But when you start eating again, just pay attention to the inflammatory response that's mounted to specific foods. So all autoimmune, all autoimmune diseases, including Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, that is autoimmune disease of the thyroid, which is the primary uh, cause of primary hypothyroidism, need to be regarded as digestive health challenges. All right, got more to say here about the thyroid and the adrenal glands when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. What? 
back on the bright side. I'm Farm. This is Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you if you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or our Truth Skin Health products. If you're dealing with some kind of health challenge you want help with, let us show you how simple and how easy it can be to restore your body back to health. You know why it's simple and easy, folks? You know why it's so simple and easy to restore the body back to health? Because it's in the body's nature to be healthy. It's in the body's nature to self-repair. It's in the body's nature to self-heal. We don't have to think about it. We just have to put the raw materials in that the body needs to do its work. We have to keep the toxins and the bad stuff out, mostly foods, sugar, cigarette smoke if you're a smoker, prescription drugs, bad stuff out, right stuff in, the body does it on its own. We couldn't have survived the millions of years that uh, we've been on planet Earth as homo habilis and homo erectus and homo sapiens. We couldn't have survived the millions of years if we didn't have a way, if we didn't develop a way of repairing ourselves. The body has evolved to repair. It's a miracle. The self-repair system that's built into every single human body, every single animal body, every single cell self-repairs. This idea that we need to be medicalized for our health is absurd on its face and insidious, even worse, insidious and sneaky because it takes our power away from us. Folks, let us show you how simple and easy it can be to restore your body back to its God-given state of self-repair. Bad stuff out, good stuff in. 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. So we're talking autoimmunity, which is uh, the primary cause of hypothyroidism. It is primary hypothyroidism, so-called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And most thyroid problems have some aspect of autoimmunity. There is the second form of uh, a, a second type of hypothyroidism, which is secondary hypothyroidism. And this is linked to excessive adrenal activity. If you're dealing with an autoimmune problem, whatever it is, but especially if it's the thyroid, I'll tell you why the thyroid is, is particularly, why the digestive system is particularly, particularly relevant for the thyroid. But if you're dealing with any autoimmune disease, you want to backtrack to the digestive system as always, our first point on the triangle of disease, but especially with the thyroid. Because you see, the digestive system activates thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone is turned on in the digestive tract. That means if you're dealing with a digestive problem, not only are you more likely to have autoimmune problems with the thyroid, but now you're not going to be activating thyroid hormone. This will cause more problems with your thyroid, more, uh, uh, more problems with a poorly functioning thyroid, which will lead to more digestive problems, which will lead to more, uh, 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 more uh, problems with your thyroid. Thyroid regulates the digestive system also, by the way. So you have this vicious downward spiral of breakdown. This is why I call the triangle of disease. This is why the triangle of disease is so fundamental. This is why I call it the fundamental aspect of health. You got your digestive system; it breaks down. That causes a blood sugar problem. That causes in turn a thyroid issue because the thyroid regulates the digestive system. The digestive system further uh, its health is further degraded, which leads to more blood sugar problems and more thyroid problems. Now you've got more digestive problems, more blood sugar problems, more thyroid problems, and on and on and on this goes. The good news is, is once you break the cycle, everything improves. Once you improve, uh, break the cycle by improving digestive health, stabilizing the blood sugar, calming the body down, everything improves. So if autoimmunity is involved, that is the immune system is attacking thyroid cells, then you're likely dealing with a food problem and a digestive problem. If you're dealing with secondary hypothyroidism, if there's an adrenal issue, that means stress. That means psychological stress and physiological stress, which can be related to the digestive system and the blood sugar system. Any way you slice it, folks, you're dealing with the triangle of disease. From a causal point of view, what I'm saying here, check this out, this is very, very important. From a causal point of view, hypothyroidism is not about the thyroid. The cause of hypothyroidism is not the thyroid. The cause, that's the symptom. That's the sign. And that's why you can't just treat the thyroid. And nobody can just treat the thyroid. It's about the immune system. It's about the digestive system. It's about the blood sugar system. It's about the adrenal glands. And it's, that's the triangle of disease. And if you go to a doctor, he's not going to help you. Ask anybody who's got hypothyroidism and has tried to go to a doctor, an endocrinologist, a specialist, I'm doing little air quotes here, specialist, 
There's no special diseases. Specialists aren't going to tell you that because specialists need there to be special diseases so they can get paid. But they don't help anybody. From a causal point of view, it's not about the thyroid. But if you go to the doctor and he sees, well, you seem to have dry skin. I think we'll test your thyroid. Oh, you seem like you're fatigued. I think we'll test your thyroid. This is functional medicine, another stupid aspect of medicine. We'll test your thyroid. You don't need a thyroid test. If your body's breaking down, you're hypothyroid, period. That's your thyroid test. But if you go to a doctor and he tests you, oh, your T3 is too low and your TSH is too high, blah, 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 you're going to get put on a thyroid hormone. You think that's going to help you? Maybe in the short run, because it'll be like speed. The thyroid hormone will jack up your metabolism, but in the long run, your body will adjust. In the short run, your thyroid hormone will give you a buzz. You'll get, maybe, maybe, sometimes not even that, but at best, you'll get a little amphetamine-like buzz. It'll jack you up a little bit. But in the long run, it's not going to do anything for your condition because it's not addressing the problem. This is why anybody on Synthroid, everybody on Synthroid knows that you've got to keep adjusting your dose. Synthroid is notorious among pharmacists. All pharmacists recognize that it's one of the one of the least effective of the chronic prescription of the medications that people are on chronically. Every year, Synthroid is one of the top ten drugs. Thyroid hormone thyroid hormone dosing is constantly fluctuating. You have to constantly change it. For most people, they don't even work because you're not doing anything for the thyroid. You're just simply putting hormone into the body. And it's even worse than that because it's the wrong type of hormone, which we'll get into here in a minute. And by the way, iodine is the same thing. Iodine is a critical nutrient, very, very, very important, very essential, vitally important for the glands of the body, including the thyroid, including the breasts. Super important for women who are dealing with any kind of reproductive health issue, iodine supplementation. And you're not going to get it in salt, no matter what your doctor tells you. You're not going to get enough from salt. You need more. If you're dealing with fibrocystic breasts or cysts of any kind, any gland, all, all glands need iodine. The adrenal glands need iodine. The thyroid gland needs iodine. The brain needs iodine. Iodine deficiency is one of the leading causes of cretinism and mental retardation and developmental problems in children around the world. Plain old iodine deficiency. Everybody should get on an iodine supplement. Everybody. But that doesn't mean it's going to fix your thyroid problem. Yes, iodine is a key component of thyroid hormone, and you can't have an active thyroid hormone without little chunks of iodine in it. So if you're iodine deficient, you might have a problem with it, with the, your thyroid or with thyroid hormone, but it's not a gland problem. It's a hormone problem. Remember, our hypothyroidism is, is a gland issue. It affects the tissue of the gland. Primary hypothyroidism is when the gland itself is being attacked. Excessive adrenal activity is when the gland itself is being suppressed. Iodine doesn't help the gland. It helps the hormone. And I'm not saying iodine is not important, it is, but it's not going to cure your hypothyroidism. Most people get the basics in iodine anyway, so deficiencies are rare. You're not going to get enough from iodine salt, but you're just not going to have deficiencies. They used to have this problem with goiter. And by used to, I mean like 50, 100 years ago, people had this big, huge swelling at, the, at their neck. Google goiter. If you want to see something really horrific, just Google, go to Google Images and Google goiter. It is absolutely horrific. You don't see it anymore because of iodine salt. All right. Got more to say and taking your phone calls as well on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Have you ever? All right. We are back on the bright side. Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. And we will get your calls here in just a moment. If you have questions about uh, anything we're speaking about here today, if you're hypothyroid, if you're on Synthroid and you're frustrated, it's not helping you. If you've got questions about adrenal health, skin health issues, if you've got a comment or success story you'd like to share, questions about our true skin health products or the longevity products, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. From, uh, let's see here, from the uh, JAMA Cardiology, check this out, Journal of the American Medical Association Cardiology, raising good cholesterol fails to protect against heart disease. Oh, really? Where have you heard that before? This idea of using statin drugs and now Repatha injectable drugs to lower your cholesterol for heart, to protect your heart, is so boneheaded, is so nonsensical, is so idiotic. 
on the face of it to anybody who understands biochemistry that uh, for the life of me, I cannot figure out how this scam, this, this meme, this mind virus has gotten into the, has infected the minds of medical professionals. I can see how lay people could fall for it because we're trusting. We believe our medical professionals, but how can a medical professional who's supposed to understand how the body works think that you can poison the cholesterol making machinery of the body and be better off for it? Raising, uh, reading from the article here, raising so-called, so-called good cholesterol, and by the way, there's no such thing as good cholesterol. There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. It's a mentally idiotic term. It's a stupid idea to think there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Any medical professional who uses that term should have his license revoked. Good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, stupidity. Cholesterol is just cholesterol. There's no good cholesterol. There's no bad cholesterol. It's just cholesterol. Anyway, raising so-called good cholesterol by blocking a key protein involved in its metabolism, quote, check this out, does not protect against heart disease or stroke, unquote, according to a large genetic study of 150,000 Chinese adults published in the journal JAMA Cardiology. It's because cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. It is not the cause of heart disease. Elevated cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. I know I've said it a bunch of times because it's so important to understand this. We cannot allow ourselves to be poisoned by a medical model that wants to divert attention from the real problem with heart disease, which is the triangle of disease, as always, hypothyroidism, blood sugar problems especially, and digestive health issues. We cannot let the allow the medical model to divert our attention away from the real causes of heart disease so that it can drug us and medicalize us and then charge us for it. Your statin drug is not going to help you. This idea that we take poison for risk management is so ridiculous and so absurd and so evil that we take a real poison for an imagined condition, for no condition. We're taking a statin drug just in case. It doesn't treat anything. Statin drugs don't treat anything. They're risk management poisons. And yes, poisons they are. They poison the liver. They shut down the production of substances in the body. All drugs are poisons. There's no drug that's not. Unbelievable. I, I know. I, I just get it. ticks me off so much. All right. Let me do one more, and then we'll get to uh, we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. So much to talk about here. All right. This is from... Uh, this is from, bup, 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 this is a from, where, where am I reading this from here? This is from Brian Richards, CCN. He's a nutritionist, really interesting nutritionist, by the way, off his website, wellnessresources.com. Low levels of potassium increase, linked to increased diabetes risk. And this is a hidden cause of, the, of blood sugar problems, by the way. Electrolytes, which we spent a lot of time talking about here not too long ago, and we'll continue talking about them. Electrolytes help the body utilize energy. They're electrical. Diabetes is an energy processing disorder. The body does not process energy correctly, sugar being energy. So when you are uh, deficient in electrolytes, how we process energy becomes compromised. Diabetes itself can be the result of electrolyte deficiencies. How do we, lose, how do we become deficient in electrolytes? We urinate. Our electrolytes come out in the urine. So if you're not constantly replacing your potassium and your sodium and your calcium and your magnesium and your chloride, your main electrolytes, if you're not constantly replacing these electrolytes, you're going to be deficient and you're going to be more likely to have energy deficient, deficiency diseases like diabetes and heart disease for that matter. That's one of the reasons why people's blood sugar is more concentrated or higher first thing in the morning because we lose electrolytes when we go to the bathroom in the evening and we don't, haven't replaced them. That's why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is so vital. It's an electrical drink, uh, electrolyte drink, especially first thing in the morning, and especially if you're dealing with an energy disorder like diabetes. Not just potassium, by the way. You need potassium, you need sodium, you need calcium, you need magnesium, and you need chloride. Eat your salt, use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and when I say eat salt, use Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt, which contains all the minerals, not just sodium chloride, as important as sodium chloride are. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to New York and welcome Dave to The Bright Side. Good morning. What's up, Dave? Hello, Dave. Dave, Dave, Hello. you there? This, hey, how's it going, buddy? for me in New York. I am yeah, looking for you in New York. Where in New York are you? Where are you? Way upstate on the Canadian border. Love it. What town? 
Well, it's what called ta- Messina. I know Messina well. I lived in Syracuse for a long time. Yes, I know oh, Messina. That goodness. is a cute, cute little cold, miserable town. <laughs> Sorry. Cool is right. <laughs> Do you know there's more bars You're per right. capita in upstate New York than there are in any other uh, city, uh, any other part of the country? Typical, huh? You're right, because because it gets cold and nasty up there the in the winter time. How, is it winter time yet there? It's uh, it has started, but then a mild. It got a little mild for a while. Now we're a little bit cool again. So you don't see the sun from October to May, pretty much, right? <laughs> now that's exaggerating. That. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Time, All yeah, right, it's a cold spot, though. All right, tell me how I can help my, you, Dave. What's uh, going on? My concern was uh, we have. Um, I had a blood test on Monday okay. because I, over the weekend I had a uh, I had a little stomach virus uh, inflammation you could say pain is what it was you know and, and uh, like uh, fever and that sort of thing so I thought maybe I should go in for blood test in case this tick bite that I had a couple of weeks ago was a problem but they said don't worry about the tick but they gave me a blood test anyway my kidney p- figures didn't look right okay so um, your creatinine and your your bun. Blood exactly. urine nitrogen? Creatinine was, uh, yeah, creatinine was 1.64, and the okay. GFR was 42. Okay. All right. How old so, are you? Um, How old are you? Uh, I'm 70. Okay. Okay. It's not, you know, it's not out of, it's not crazy out of, out of control here. And it's somewhat normal for a 70-year-old man to start to have some kidney dysfunction. The kidneys filter the blood. And anytime you have a problem with the kidneys, that means you got a blood, you've got a blood problem. Remember, where the problem shows up is not where the problem is caused. The sh- where it shows up is secondary to the cause. The cause of kidney problems are dirty blood. Now, when I say dirty blood, I mean blood that's, that's clogged up and sticky from food, as I talked about at the beginning of the program, food toxicity, and then, um, and then sugar. Those are the two main reasons why the blood becomes toxic. Now, cortisol and stress hormone will compromise things, and hypothyroidism as well, and that's your triangle. But the first two things you want to want to be working with is food and sugar. Go on a ketogenic diet as soon as possible. That means restricting your carbohydrates down to as close to zero as very, very low carb, low calorie, and high fat. And then you want to start to treat yourself as a diabetic using anti-diabetic supplements. Hang, hang on. Uh, we got to take a break, Dave. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return with more good health information in your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side talking to Dave in New York about kidney function. Dave, at the age of 70, it's not unusual that the kidneys would start to, kidney function would start to become compromised. Always, and whether you're 70 or whether you're 50 or whether you're 40, whatever, it, no matter how old you are, if you're on dialysis, if you have a kidney problem, focus number one on the uh, digestive system and number two on the blood sugar system. Kidney problems are due to dirty blood. The kidneys filter the blood. Just think of a spaghetti strainer that just gets clogged up. And that's basically what kidney disease is. It's a clogged up kidney. Now, you can also have autoimmune problems where big chunk, those, ch- those chunks of food that I was talking about earlier in the program, they get into the blood, they can deposit in the kidneys. So you can have uh, autoimmune issues in the kidneys, immune issues, I should say, in the kidneys. But fo- basically by focusing, uh, by treating yourself like a diabetic, focusing on controlling blood sugar by keeping your, your intake of sugary foods and, and sweet foods and bread and pastas and things that break down into sugar quickly down to a minimum and then using sweeties your ultimate niacin your ultimate selenium and the healthy star pack especially the beyond tangy tangerine you can help stabilize your blood sugar if you have any digestive issues those need to be addressed and that means elimination diet Swerovy cleanse and then keeping a food diary and then eliminating problem foods and then starting to use things like the nightly essence and the ultimate enzymes to improve your body's ability to process food and then strengthening the digestive lining. We talked earlier about this whole leaky gut aspect to poor health where the gut breaks down and chunks of food leak into the blood. You can strengthen the digestive lining with your glucogel caps, with your Fucoid Z, Also, the amino acid glutamine can be very helpful for the digestive lining. Anything that's slimy, like seaweed, that's where you get your Fucoid Z, high aluronic acid, uh, that can also support digestive health or the health of of the digestive lining. And then zinc is a stupendously valuable mineral for digestive health. 
All right, and also for the blood sugar system. Okay, Dave, I'm going to motivate. I hope I helped you out, buddy. Thank you so much for your call, and happy winter in Messina, New York. Okay, take care, man. Oh, sorry, but sorry, I didn't mean to hang up on you there. All right, let's go to uh, uh, do, 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 let's go to Cliff in Florida. What's going on? Welcome to the bright side, Cliff. Hey, man, finally glad to be able to talk to you. Good deal. What's going on? Well, I've got a lot of things, and there's so much history, it's kind of hard. I'll make it quick. I know there's other callers. Uh, my mom currently, she's 88 years old. Well, God bless um, her. That's awesome. 80 December. Um, she had a pretty healthy life, but um, the last couple of years, she's been up, up and down with all sorts of colitis. Mm, had some that's C. diff issues, and um, she's had a couple of other things. And of course, she's been on antibiotics? Um, she was on, unfortunately, way too many times um, yeah. liquid banco. No, oh, uh, my. That's a powerful yeah. one. Yeah, it sure Are was. you a health professional by any chance? Are you in the business at all? Uh, I'm not a health professional, but I felt but you, like I've become yeah, you one. learned a lot. For years, I've learned yeah. quite a bit. And mm. in the beginning, she was taking two medications, like back when we first started staying together as roommates. It was a blessing to be able to do that. But back in 2009, and she was taking uh, Risperdone, one milligram. Oh, my God. Risperdone? Some issues that she's had. You know, earlier in life, that's helped her, and then uh, methamazole because of the thyroid. Oh my goodness! Uh, one doctor wanted to obliterate it back in 2008, and she. They was basically did it. obliterate it with the methamazole. That's a that's uh, a chemical the, uh, manipulation. or whatever it is. You know, he wanted her to swallow the radioactivity. Yeah, thing. yeah. She was hyperthyroid because her body was freaking out. We've been talking hypothyroidism, but hyperthyroidism is also a sign that the body's freaking out. I'm going to get to the. Let's cut to the chase here because I got a bunch of calls. Uh, the where, colitis. Where she's at now. She's 88, and she's been in and out like she had been home for a long time and doing well. But she's in long term, and she's dropping weight, and she's kind of dropped Ch weight. Chicken for a soup. While. Get her on some and, chicken uh, soup. She, chicken soup. Chicken soup, bone soup. Make homemade chicken soup for her as much as possible, as much as she'll drink. She needs liquid protein. Broth. Yeah, exactly. She needs liquid protein. And the beautiful thing about chicken soup is not only do you get protein, but you also get uh, um, things that help, cartilage factors that help build up the, the connective tissue of the body, particularly connective tissue in the intestine. Also probiotics, like they're going out of style. She'll do kimchi or, or uh, fermented foods, um, uh, fermented radishes, fermented beets, anything that's fermented. That will also help. You're going to need to support. To be on tangy tangerine. It's a must-have, but she's going to have to do it very slowly and very small amounts because it'll pass right through her with her digestive problems. Yeah, so, right now, just to let you know, too, she's uh, they're working on replacing her dentures, and she's on a pureed diet, so they'll have to strain the soup. Is she in a home? Um, is she in a nursing so, home? Pardon me. Is she in a nursing home or the hospital? She's in a nursing home. Oh, uh, jeez. Can you get her gelatin? Can you get her on um, some? Yeah. Get her, make some, not the sugary kind, though. I mean, if she has to do the sugary kind, the gelatin will be very helpful for, helpful for the digestive system. Jello, a gelatin, I should say, aloe vera gel, uh, oh, yeah, high hyaluronic high, high acid, apple cider vinegar with her meals, healthy start pack. Yeah, we used to take that a few years back and stopped. Yeah. Uh, get back on it. Fucoid Z, chicken but soup. That, Fucoid Z, F U C O I D Z, Swero V. These are all wonderful things that are improve her health very noticeably and quickly. Uh, bone broth protein smoothies, if you can do those. Vegetable juices, make vegetable juices at home, smuggle them into the nursing home or wherever she's at, and get her to drink vegetable juices. Throw some beet in there to make it a little bit sweet. You can, can definitely can do this. You can change your uh, life. Can I even get a pure form if I get a food processor, right? Yeah, get a, a Vitamix. A Vitamix. Vitamix. Make her veggie juices. And uh, I mean, I, I got to move, but go back to the archives. I gave you a ton of information there, okay? Go back to the archives at benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com. Review everything I just said because I gave you a ton of information that will change her life, and even okay, at the age of 88. Uh, uh, an email address, too? Yeah, ben, B-E-N, at K-S-C-O dot com. Thanks for your call, Cliff. Yes. God bless you, man. God bless you, my friend, Have, and good luck with your mom. All right, let's uh, go to my friend Elaine in AK. Elaine in Alaska. What's going on, Elaine? Welcome to the Bright hey. Side. Hey. hey, hey, it's snowing here right now. It's beautiful. Well, surprise, surprise. You're in Alaska. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What do you think of the nice new uh, blood pressure? <laughs> oh, my God. I talked about that a little yesterday. Now they want you to be drugged if you're 130. You know, when they lower the standards like that, it means doctors pretty much have to give you a, a blood pressure drug. That's standard of care. If they don't, they're liable. You know, if they don't at least at least tell you that you should be on a lower uh, up antihypertensive, which are 
terrible drugs, particularly beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. So what's going on, Elaine? How can I help you? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm a little perplexed. I just got a question about how um, probiotics work. That, that book by Anthony William. All of us are all of us are perplexed. Even people in the probiotic business, okay. nobody knows how they work. Well, we know how they work, but nobody knows the right ones to take. Nobody wants. Nobody knows when to take them. Nobody has good brands. I mean, it's, they're trying to come up with a probiotic a credentialing service where they credential probiotics. But right now, it's just it's too tricky. To, nobody really understands how to preserve them and how to chip them and how to dose them. Use the nightly essence. In my, this is the way I do it. I love the nightly essence and just take a lot of it. I take nine a day. You know, the more you take, the better. Fun dose yourself functionally to the point where when you take a little extra, it doesn't make as much of a difference. That's called functional dosing. So, so you take three, see how you feel. Oh, I'll take four, I feel better. Oh, I take five, I feel even better. Oh, I take six, I didn't notice too much of a difference. So you know your sweet spot is between five and six of capsules. That's called functional dosing. That's the best way to do it. Uh, always use uh, fiber, uh, if not with your probiotics, at least during the day because fiber feeds the probiotics. It sustains the probiotics and of course keeping the environment of the intestine probiotic friendly is also important. That means staying away from problem foods, especially refined carbohydrates and sugars, but anything that causes digestive distress will throw off the bacteria. Certainly antibiotics will make a, will, will wreak havoc on the probi uh, microbiome, the bacteria in the gut. But you know what? Water, tap water has, probiotic, has antibiotics in it. So if you're drinking tap water, that can throw things off. Chlorine in tap water can throw things off. Fluoride in tap water can throw things off. There's antibiotics in fish and there's antibiotics antibiotics in meat, and there's antibiotics in dairy. It's everywhere. So it's very difficult to keep that microbiome healthy. Pesticides in vegetables. You could be eating veggies and salads and destroying your microbiome. So you absolutely have to use a probiotic supplement like the Nightly Essence, eat fermented foods, and make sure that you're using prebiotics like a good fiber supplement. Hey, I want to get one more call in, Elaine. I hope I helped you out, and uh, okay. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to get oh, one more in. Uh, let's go to John in Kansas real quick. Uh, real, uh, I got one more call after you, John. So what's going on? How, how can I help you? Yeah, I've uh, lost a significant amount of weight. want to build nice. the body back up, tighten up the skin, uh, build some muscles, but I'm eating ketogenic. And I... John? John? What happened to John? Disappeared. John, I'm sorry. Call back to him. I guess we lost you. I'm going to give Carl the Truth Raider the last word. I'm sorry to do this to you, buddy. Got about 30 seconds, Carl the Truth Raider. What's going on? My dentist wants to have fluoride in, in the drinking water. He proves it. What do you say to that? It's terrible. Fluoride is a terrible, terrible, terrible substance. All you got to do is Google toxicity, fluoride toxicity, and tell your dentist to Google fluoride toxicity. Carl, God bless you, brother. Thank have you. a beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.